What you say, man? Yeah. Unloading cement. Uh, oh, rather sure has. concrete. Get the one closest to the edge. <coughs> Use your knees. Use your back, not your knees. Natural materials. Good to know. Those are 60 pounds each? Yep. Jeez. Don't hurt yourself, guys. They're not that heavy. Let's just throw them in there and just dump water on it, bag and all. Isn't that how you do it? Yeah, I think so. Sounds a lot easier. <laughs> One more load. One more, just like that, huh? Yep. You guys want me to follow with the GoPro? Hi, Greg. No, the wind's just gonna blow Hold it out. On. Okay. Wait! Little maintenance. I don't know if this one just like the whole shaft turn, so we'll give that one a little extra there too. <laughs> Hello, losing aggregate. I heard that pebble. Oh. Last one for you, buddy. Anchoring post, patios. Oh no. They don't show anything about putting this in your fishing vessel's bilge. We could have made a poor choice here. Get in there, G, for the camera. People want to see wind, our tea. moving fish around. But they were 60 pound fish. Good job, T. Good job. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Love I you. There, yep. Yep. Windy and cold out. Not really wow. cold, but it was a little bit the chilly. The question is, is it enough? Let's put it down there, like stack it down there and see if it covers the bottom. And then they look like they're what about 20 inches long? One, 
17. Not even close. By 5. By 11. That's 220 inches. That's, uh, that's like almost 20 feet, right? 220. Yeah. Is that close? It'd be pretty close. We shouldn't use as much back here because, um, Skinny's up. Yeah, it gets skinnier. And we want it to slope. Yeah, so there's the front of the sump and I got that formed in earlier should be set up now I can take my my blocks off of there that turned out pretty good looks good so like really everything is pretty much done in the sump except for this aft wall but I can't see it because that covers on the way so uh, we yeah. still have a few things left to do down here before we can mix up concrete so finish up a few odds and ends I yep. guess we'll just kind of bring you back tomorrow and explain what we have planned so yeah we got to get our little uh, our little sump there the I guess the end of it the retaining wall whatever you want to call it get that tabbed in I don't think there's a whole lot else to do down in there other than that we'll put a couple of lines down the side so we know how high to fill concrete to and where to kind of screed it off I guess and um, yeah we'll have to put some plastic down on everything too so we don't have a big huge cleanup mess mm -hmm. a clean up job yeah pretty keep, tough keep to keep grind away the on. tough to grind away the concrete huh at least it was for the old stuff that you kind of chipped away at yeah so yeah, we're gonna get everything measured up good tomorrow, make sure that we have enough material here, and kind of go from there. Make sure that, might have to pick up a few more bags, we'll see. Guys have been doing a wonderful job down here. <laughs> well, we're making headway again, I feel like. Um, yeah. It kind of seemed like we are going back there for a while. I was one step those. forward, two steps back, but now I think it's two steps forward, one step back, so that's a positive thing. <laughs> yeah, flipping through pictures, you've come a long ways. Yeah, yeah, the picture of the big huge hatch on here and everything, I guess that was the beginning. We had <laughs> nothing at that point, yeah. except how a lot of stuff off the boat. So yeah, it has come a long ways from there. Well, I guess that's all for today, so we'll bring you guys back tomorrow. Yeah, see what we for have joining in store. us. All right, everyone, so we've got a wheelbarrow, <laughs> we've got a trowel, and we've got a hoe. So you might be able to guess what we're up to here soon. Just headed down to the Emerald Isle to do a little gardening. <laughs> nice sunny day. We've had a lot of rain the last three or four days. Yeah, so we're pretty excited. Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be pour day for us. Hauled down uh, 20 bags already mixed yesterday. I'm going to do some measuring up and make sure that, uh, that we have enough material. I think we're pretty close. Might pick up a few more bags just to be on the safe side. We're not planning to go completely to the back of the shaft alley just because we have a little bit of glass work that we need to do um, underneath the shaft packing gland and I think it's going to be a little hard to get in there and clean that up properly um, with the shaft still in the way so we'll probably just cut it short I don't know uh, I don't know how much a foot maybe two foot just need enough room to, to be in there and, and work comfortably. There's all our concrete mix. 20 bags of it, so uh, that's like 1,200 pounds. 
We don't have a whole lot to do this morning. I'm gonna take a look down here. We got our tiny little partition put in yesterday for where our actual sump will be. So we had a couple of two by four blocks right here holding this in place. So I couldn't tab this area. So we'll get in here, uh, get this putty cleaned up this morning with a die grinder, probably knock that down, smooth it out. And then uh, we'll just mix up a little bit of putty, uh, get the rest of this tabbed in real good. And then I think we'll probably put some heat on it to make sure it, it kicks good. Start getting some, some lines laid out on the side here to where we're gonna fill this. I think it's gonna be somewhere right in this area here. We picked up a roll of plastic so we can cover these stringers um, just down to the level that we're gonna put the concrete. That way we don't get a bunch of splatter all over the stuff that we have to come back and clean up later. We do have a lot of stuff that still needs to be tabbed onto these and then uh, we'll be putting gel coat over them when we're finished. So we'll just try and minimize all that cleanup. And uh, back here is this spot I was talking about. So I still need to get in here and we wanna, we wanna build up this glass similar to like this tabbing. So yeah, if you can kind of see down in here, there's a bunch of old tabbing that's all kind of, it's a mess down there. I gotta get in here and clean this up. We wanna build this up and just kind of have a, a good solid um, bulkhead down there for whatever happens in the back. We, this will already be all basically done, tied into the new stuff. And if we tear out everything behind it later, we have something good and solid to build off of. So um, we'll wanna like even up this tabbing. This is probably a good quarter inch right there, close to a difference between that and this plug. So we gotta get all this leveled off. We need to get this all cleaned up, build it up. Probably gonna add, you know, a solid three eighths or half inch in there. And um, in order to do that, this, this stuff pretty much just needs to be out of the way. So we're not gonna pour our concrete completely back there until we get in there and dig the, the rest of that out and make it nice. So we'll probably end, end somewhere in here, I think. And it's no big deal. It'll make a cold joint, but it's no big deal because all of this is gonna be covered with fiberglass anyways. It's not a critical thing like that. So we'll just have to probably throw in a chunk of Probably a two by four or something and just drop a couple screws into the stringer, hold it in place. We're pretty excited about getting getting this down. This is kind of, this is a big step here. And uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take for this concrete to cure. Hopefully not too long for the moisture to, to come out of it. It doesn't need to be fully cured for us, but it needs to be dry enough so we can lay fiberglass back down on it. Start getting some measurements here and uh, and see where we're at. I'm fixing to take this uh, bearing block out of here. So we need to make sure that we have an accurate measurement of where this is. This is kind of the last thing that needs to come out of here before we lay some concrete down. This shaft should be self-supporting, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw uh, block of wood over the top of this and we're gonna just uh, tie the shaft on there just put a, a touch of tension on it just to, to make sure it doesn't sag what we're concerned about is if it changes the if it squishes the packing a little bit right here uh, we'll have water leaking out of there and we want to keep this dry so um, it should be fine but but uh, that packing can crush a little bit if there's pressure on it, if it's not even. And so we just wanna, we just wanna keep it from leaking and uh, making a big mess down here. Okay, well, let's just give this a little tap here. Uh 
there's inside of that babbit bearing you can see this channel that's been cut in there to facilitate uh, spreading the grease out I think I mentioned before uh, battle bearings were actually designed to be run in oil but uh, yeah I guess guys use grease on fishing vessels I don't know if that's right or wrong At any rate doesn't seem to have hurt it much I was gonna reach out to a couple guys with some experience with these and just ask them you know generally how how hot they run um, just kind of out of curiosity I guess this is like our last piece of old stuff in here to come out that's cool to think about yeah it sure is this one must actually be in some good wood yeah So these are just uh, threaded studs. They got fine thread on one side and uh, regular leg bolt style thread on the other one. Made out of silicon bronze, I'm guessing. Some, some kind of bronze alloy. All right, well, mm, that's loose, so. So these are basically self-centering bearings. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a little bit of movement in there. That's just for the simple fact that from this point back, there isn't actually a bearing like this. It will help, you know, keep the shaft running true. There's a cutlass bearing at the tail end of the shaft, right where it exits the stern tube. And that is basically just a a bronze uh, tube with um, rubber lined on the inside and that's what the shaft runs in it's water lubricated and then sometimes uh, forward right behind the shaft packing gland right here you'll also have a cutlass bearing uh, we don't know what this has in it because we've never been in there before and we won't be able to find out until we get on the grid which will probably be uh, fairly soon here we're going to need to get on the grid and pull that prop and pull the shaft forward so we can get a final measurement on it because this is going to get cut somewhere in here and a new coupling put on it. Actually, we just plan on having the shaft replaced. And uh, at any rate, the new one comes about into here, the face of the new coupling. So this, this one's going to be a little bit long right now. And so the new coupling for this one will be in this area and this whole bearing block will move right into this area here somewhere. So, uh, let's see, um, that's that. This shouldn't really move much. So we'll just give this a little tap. The only thing, like I say, I'm concerned about is that leaking. And I'm not like concerned about it leaking and flooding and sinking the boat. I'm just talking about a little drip. Um, and we just want to keep this area dry. Did it drop? Yeah. All righty. So this is just like when we go to realign all this stuff, we're gonna have to to fiddle with this some. Yeah. Sure. Right. I mean, it's Screw just it. gonna come down to shimming it up. Yeah. With a, a indicator on it. I think we should just throw a block across here just to keep this pressure mm -hmm. off of it. Yeah. Anything good?
One will suffice her. and five eighths to the top of the shaft. I had written that down at some point. Thinking ahead, huh? I don't know, like, that's gonna do as much for accuracy, but there it is. And that's that for that crusty old thing. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. This none. Just want to have grease all over everything. So we gotta take these and get them all cleaned up. So I'm not concerned about some dust on there. Well, I don't even know what's going on with that. It's that like a big steel that. shim. That's noise. All right. Well. There it is, the last, uh, bear oh, it was a hollow bearing block. Whoa! No wonder it was so wiggly. Yeah, that's it. That's the last, uh, very rare wood from Blackened Forest. Oh, it's weird looking, isn't it? Hmm. Cool. All right, we'll get this junk out of here. Tidied up. Very nice. Yeah. Good riddance, rotten <laughs> old wood. Well, that piece didn't rotten, but the rest sure was. So. Good riddance. All righty, guys. So we went and picked up five more bags of concrete mix. Got our uh, estimates kind of figured out this morning. Stretch the string line across the bottom of the shaft alley here and measure down and get a better idea of what we'd need. Kind of as precise as we could be. Hold on. Yeah, it's a little bit hard because these, uh, this leftover concrete here, of course, is uh, as lumpy as a sand dune. So. As you would expect, it's pretty tough to estimate against that, but I think we did pretty good. We got a little bit extra, so if we need it, it's there. I think that's an important thing. Yep. Not to run out midstream. So Dad's just marking where we're gonna bring the concrete up to. Somewhere in there, roughly. We didn't really know how high this would need to be, so we just made it long, made it a little bit tall. Um, once we once we get the concrete in here and it sets and everything, we'll just come back in and just trim this. Probably put a little angle on it again, like it has there, so it's easy to wrap the fabric around it. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to get this stuff down. Yeah, same here. It's been a bit of a process getting here, mm -hmm. so good feeling to be moving forward with it. Yeah, it's gonna be nice as we move forward on our projects and everything to know that this is all done. 
um, eventually will be reworking the rest of this fish hold and this is something that we didn't want to have to do. Um, it would really it'd be like starting over with the with the shaft alley covers and everything and so it's nice to know that this is finished it's out of the way and uh, we won't have to destroy anything. Yeah it'll be really easy to pick back up where we left off. Yep. So here's Dad's dam. This is where we're stopping for now uh, with the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. Form, I guess. yeah. Concrete form. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So until we get the shaft out of the way and we deal with that uh, shaft log there, um, we're going to just hold the concrete back because it'll be a lot easier to get our, our glass under that, that packing fixed up and stuff once this is out of the way and yeah then, that packing uh, gland will be taken off yep and then we can build up the glass and we'll we'll uh set it back in there too cramped in there to try and work around that it's just hey you could do it it's just gonna take mm -hmm. a lot of time just take a lot more time trying yeah. to work around that stuff yeah and since we need to build it up underneath the packing anyway i yep. mean it just makes sense to wait so yeah it does so we'll uh, string out a line, I guess, huh? I guess so, yeah. All right. Trying to see where we fall here. Guess that line here, yeah? Yep, that would be it. All right, so we're getting this stringer covered up with some plastic here. Try and keep the the concrete splatter down. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get messy down here, I guess. Most likely. Uh, just run a couple lines out here. So as you might notice, we have our aluminum angle down here now. A uh, little change of plan. We were going to originally screed the concrete just by following our tape, uh, but um, we're using duct tape. Not only is it silver, but also once it gets dirty, it'll be uh, pretty hard to see where you're actually where you, where your line actually is. So we came with came up with the idea of just using our aluminum bars. Our angle is a... It's a screed is a, rail? Yeah, screed rail. So. Yeah, so that'll work good. We just uh, poked a couple holes in it, screw them into the stringer. It's all lined up and everything. Um, simple and easy, I guess. Yeah, it'll make it a lot faster too because you won't be like having to go back over it several times. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Finding, finding your line. And we're not really worried about you know, a perfect finish. We're just looking for fairly smooth and fairly flat. And, um, and a we'll consistent actually, grade. Yeah, a consistent grade with hopefully not a bunch of holes and dips and puddles. But yep. I think it should come out pretty good. <clears throat> we'll probably give it a brush finish when we're done, just like a concrete um, sidewalk. And that will give our, our resin something to, to bite into a little bit and keys it a little bit rather than just put a, a nice smooth finish on it because we are going to fiberglass over it so we have a really nice watertight connection when we're done. So also on the uh, cement bags directions say to use a polymer to you know chemically bond the concrete but this stuff is just it's so rough anyway I don't think it really matters along with that we're, we are putting a a cup or a bowl over it of uh, we're glassing it in so yeah we'll have it's not going to go anywhere we'll have a quarter inch or so a fiberglass on top of this when we're done yep it's going to be physically locked in place for ever mm -hmm. it's so rough there's lots of spots where you know it's like overhangs and stuff for the the new concrete to key in i don't know <laughs> it's really worth it, so yeah. I'm not really too concerned about it. Yeah, not necessary, I don't think, in this case. Uh, if you were doing a sidewalk, sure, but this is just something that we'll never see again once we put glass over it, so no worries, right? 
Yeah, I think we'll be perfectly fine on it. So let's see if I can get this lined up here. That looks pretty good. There's the line dad is going off of there. We're trying to. <laughs> yep. Just has to be close, right? Yeah. No worries. Uh, yeah, that should work out pretty good. And we'll have a nice clean line when we're done. Uh, there shouldn't be a lot of cleanup to do on this. Looks good. Yeah, I think that'll work all right, huh? Mm-hmm. The big day is here. It's core day. Got the whole crew down here. Ready, we're ready. Here's our mixing station over here. Got a, just a jet flow water pump with a couple of garden hoses stuck into our water tank there. The back for our fresh water. Sure glad we filled up before we started this. <laughs> <laughs> 